Today we're going to talk about hammers, particularly how to dress a hammer. This hammer here has been dressed. Uh, dressing a hammer typically refers to contouring, smoothing, and polishing the faces of the hammer. In this case, we have the normal face of the hammer and the face of the cross beam. The faces of a hammer need to be smooth and they need to be polished, really, because when you're striking hot steel, you impart a lot of texture into the steel based on either your hammer or your anvil. This hammer needed to be dressed because, well, when I got it, it was pretty heavily damaged, uh, as well as another ball peen I have when I got at the same time. It had quite a few chips and gouges and scrapes in the face, as well as on the peen here. When you buy a hammer from the factory, they are not dressed very well. This is a Picard hammer. It's made in Germany, but it is a Swedish pattern. This happens to be a 1,000 gram, somewhere around 2.2 pound head. And the head itself is painted. It has some sort of black epoxy coat paint type stuff. But the faces themselves are actually untreated. They are simply ground. I will say that this is a much better surface treatment than a Stanley hammer or a Harbor Freight hammer because it doesn't have anything over the top of it that you have to remove. However, it is still not the surface finish that you want to be forging with. As you can see, it is a very gritty finish. It looks like maybe a 60 or 80 grit finish. Uh, and it is harshly chamfered. So you have quite hard edges here, even on the back here, uh, on, on the, the corners. And we needed to take care of that. But as it, as it just goes in general, this is a much better hammer head than a Stanley or a Harbor Freight or an S-Wing, whatever you go and, and buy from Lowe's or Home Depot, this is probably better finished than those simply because it doesn't have anything over the top of the steel. The handle is a different story. This is an ash handle, and it has both lacquer and paint. I'm actually going to have to strip this off, which is it's, it's kind of sad because you get the, the style of having this, this gray handle here. But I am going to end up stripping this off and possibly even recontouring the handle because it's a little thick in the handle here, and it's thicker here than it is down here. So if I grip backward, I feel like I'm actually gonna slip off the handle. Here you can see the difference very close up between the two. Now that I've explained some of the philosophy, the reasoning behind dressing a hammer, why don't we go out and actually do it? The first thing I need to do is I need to pick a belt. And I currently have a 60 grit on here, but it's a little fresher than I think I want. I'm gonna go with this one. It's maybe a little bit more worn out. water bucket up here. There we go. Okay. So now I need power. Let's start off with the Stanley. As we start to grind this hammer face, we need to keep it round, all right? So we're going to be rocking it. We're going to be blending in these chamfers, all right? And we need to keep the handle out of the way when we do that. So we don't want to do this, okay? 
We don't want our handle to be bouncing into the belt. So we, we want to do our vertical axis here, all right, and our horizontal axis here. And then we want to, we can do kind of a twisting motion like this. Eventually we can move up to the slack belt up here and we can round it there. We can also come all the way down to what you can't see very well. There we go. The contact wheel, that's pretty good for doing this as well, so you can see it. And then once we're done with that, we're actually going to take it over to our contact wheel over here. This is our, uh, our buffing wheel. We're going to put some buffing compound on it, and we're going to shine up the face. If you look here, you'll notice this side of the head sticks out further than this side. So we're actually, we're, we're pretty good here. This is pretty square with the head. But we, what we are going to have to do is remove a good bit of material on this side to even out the face. You can see how much shinier it is now. There are still some scratch marks in different directions, but it's much smoother. The contour between the sides and the face is much smoother. I'm going to go ahead and knock these down a little bit more on the very edges and then work on the peen. I think I'm actually going to go try going straight to a worn out 400 right now. We'll see how it works. So, four.
There you go. Hello. I think you can see the difference.
Can you see how soft that finish is? Just how soft. Come on, focus. There you go. Can you see how soft and smooth it is now? Ah, it's beautiful. That's how you dress a hammer. That is how you modify a handle. I didn't really talk about the handle too much. So I took the, the original handle, which was kind of just kind of wavy and oval, and I added facets to the sides and then facets to the opposing sides as well. And then I broke it down from a square into an octagon. I I narrowed down the handle quite a bit because I, I found the wider, the thicker the handle, it's just not comfortable for me to use for long periods of time. I prefer a somewhat thinner handle. So there is dressing and finishing a hammer handle. This is essentially a fully custom hammer at this point. And I think I'm really going to like it.